He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yeah. Well, welcome to the divine service here this day, the seventh Sunday of Easter, uh, first Sunday after the ascension of our Lord. And we rejoice in the gifts that our God has given to us this morning by singing our opening hymn, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Greetings in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the Sunday, May 12th, 2024 worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in production of this broadcast are Bill and Diane Breen and Casey Jones. Our organist is Nancy Gunterman. The opening hymn is number 643, sent forth by God's blessing. Hymn number 643, found in the Lutheran service book. Bill Schaub is sponsoring the flowers on the altar to the glory of God in remembrance of his and Lori Schaub's wedding anniversary on May 15th. The Hellman family is sponsoring the flowers on the stand in loving memory of Darren Scott Hellman. Josh, Rachel, and Caleb Welker are sponsoring the radio broadcast today to the glory of God in honor and thanksgiving for all mothers. Please rise. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory, Glory be to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above the heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The first reading for this, the seventh Sunday of Easter, from the book of Acts, the first chapter, beginning at the twelfth verse. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthias, Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these, with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, 
which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Acheldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The catechetical review in regards to Christian questions and their answers. Do you hope to be saved? Yes, that is my hope. In whom then do you trust? In my dear Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Christ? The Son of God, true God and true man. The epistle reading from 1 John, the fifth chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the singing of the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. Jesus said, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. You, Having heard the gospel of our Lord, we confess our common Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe, believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This time, if there's any children who'd like to come forward for a children's message, you may do so. morning. So Thursday, Thursday was a special day in the church year. I'm not even going to ask if you knew what it was. I'm just going to tell you what it was. Thursday was Ascension Day. Ascension Day. Now we know that Jesus was crucified, right? That he rose from the grave. And Ascension Day is the day where Jesus ascended into heaven. He went back to his Father in heaven. He came from his heavenly Father. He went back to heaven. And we celebrate that. You know, you know it would be nice if he was here with us. That would be very nice. But he also said, hey, if I don't go back to heaven, then the Holy Spirit, he went back to send the Holy Spirit. But there's something else going on when Jesus ascends into heaven. If we were to look at the book of Job, the book of Job, there is a heavenly council so the picture gives us. And in that council, and I don't know how we, I don't know how we're going to picture this, but maybe in our minds we can see um, like chairs. Maybe a bunch of chairs where the angels, the great angels get to sit with God and they're, God's on his throne and the great angels are there. But the book of Job tells us there was one other one angel who got to come into the heavenly throne room, and that was the devil. He was still allowed then to go in the heavenly throne room and accuse God's people. Oh, that one. You know, God, you don't know. And there's this back and forth. And God says, Has you, have you considered my servant Job? And then the rest of the book follows on. Well, Ascension Day, Jesus takes his seat in the heavenly council. Now that's fantastic. That is absolutely wonderful. Because what we're to hear is, is that Jesus went and the Son of God received his, his crown and his glory and the praise of all the, the creatures in heaven. Those who have gone before us and the angels and the archangels and the cherubim and the seraphim. And he was seated with the heavenly council. And then the devil was going, hey, I want to tell you, God, about this person. I'm going to tell you about Wesley. God says, or Jesus stands up and says, I object. You can't talk about him. Why not? I died for him. Because I want to talk to you about that Pastor Thompson. He's a rat. Jesus stands up and says, I object. You can't talk about him. Each and every one of us, each and every one of these folks out here, now Jesus stands in front of God's throne and says, anytime the devil was going to whisper to God or talk to God and say, I accuse them, Jesus says, no, I died for them. And he shows God his wounds, his hands, his side, his feet, his forehead, and all the scars that are on there. And more than that, Jesus said to Michael, the great archangel, Michael, you need 
to take Satan out of this council. You need to take Satan out of the heavenly throne room. And Satan was taken out of the throne room and shoved out of heaven. And no longer, no longer can Satan go into the heavenly throne room. No longer can the devil go into the heavenly throne room and accuse you before God. You have someone who's defending you. You have somebody on your side before the heavenly throne. And that someone is Jesus. Jesus is the one who's saying, that is my brother. That is my sister. They are baptized into my name and my person. They are baptized into my work. They are innocent because of what I have done for them. Jesus stands before the throne of God, even now, even today, and proclaims to the Father, these are my people. They belong to me. Because they belong to me, Father. They belong to you also. That is the wonder and the glory and the joy of the day we had on Thursday, which was Ascension Day. That Jesus went to heaven and he defends us from all evil now. And so we are very thankful for that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus who has ascended into the heavenly realms, who even now stands before your throne and pleads our case before you, that he is our Savior, that we are innocent for the sake of what he has done for us on our behalf. May we live in that joy and that confidence and go forth and tell others about what Jesus has done. In Jesus' name. Thank you for coming down. If you would head back to your families now, and we continue with the singing of our next hymn. The hymn of the day is hymn number 493, a hymn of glory let us sing, hymn number 493 in the Lutheran service book.
The sermon text from today's gospel reading. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world. The words of our text. Please be seated. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let me, you know, I, I like learning stuff, all, all kinds of stuff, but definitely, you know, obviously about theology and Christianity and whatnot. Uh, one of the things I, I enjoy doing is listening to uh, Christian scholars and, and some non-Christian scholars and listen to them debate back and forth, listen to uh, men like uh, John Lennox and John Warwick Montgomery and Gene Veith and Pastor Brian Wolfmuller. Um, it's hard to uh, transfer, I think, because they're having dialogues with other men. There's this group called the New Atheists. They're not so new anymore, but um, they're called the New Atheists. And these are, are men like uh, Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens. Uh, and they, they debate back and forth on, on stage. And it, it's, it's a lot of interesting information to, to take in. I like to listen to it. I like to hear it. I like to hear the arguments uh, back and forth. And it's hard to transfer their format into this format. You know, it, this isn't a podcast. This isn't a YouTube video. This is proclamation of the Word of God. This is a different thing right here, right now. Um, um, but it's a standout sentence that we have in our scripture reading for today. I've given them my word, and the world has hated them. Okay. So I was looking at something the other day, just a while ago. Uh, this is from secularhumanism.org. Uh, it was a journal called The Free Inquiry, and it was from an editorial, an opening part of an editorial in The Free Inquiry. It says, around 2007, the United States joined the rest of the world's high-income countries in rejecting the whole God-worshiping enterprise. And then in quotes, the editor, the author of the article goes on to say, and it was about time. Really? Well, maybe the world does hate us. Maybe the world does level its vitriol and its anger and its hate at us. The world, um, as Jesus puts it, is not some general, generic, undefined, definable gobbledygook of a mass. What is the world? The world is comprised of those who would be considered unbelievers. And what I find it odd is that unbelievers hate the word. Unbelievers hate Christianity, and by extension, they hate Christians. Now, I could, I could understand this, right? I could understand this if, if the world snickered, you know, like, <clears throat> those people, yeah. I, 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 I can understand that. I mean, let's face it, a literal six-day creation, the world covered by water in a great flood, A man swallowed by a fish for three days and three nights, then thrown up on a beach somewhere? You could see where someone might look at Christians and say that we're just believers in fairy tales. And I can certainly see where certain aspects or certain sections of Christianity give the whole lot of us a bad name. There's the stereotypical TV preacher who comes from the name and claim it background of theology where they say, if you plant a seed, if you send money to my ministry, you will be blessed. You know, that's right up there with late night Miss Cleo psychic reading infomercials. It doesn't give 
Christianity a good look. And of course, within Christianity, there's always a scandal or two going on because, you know, people are people and people do people things. It's absolutely true. So I can look around and I can see where a person might view Christians as those who are just gullible and foolish, but on the whole, really pretty harmless. Because it's very difficult to see where love your neighbor, care for the poor and needy, and trust that someone else paid your debt and you have eternal life could bring out hate. And yet Jesus says the world has hated us because of him. Look, the Bible can honestly make people uncomfortable because sooner or later you're gonna you're going to find accounts of miracles that no reasonable person or a person of a reasonable mind should believe in. People don't rise from the grave. Water doesn't change into wine. There's got to be some reasonable explanation for all of it. And, of course, you're going to encounter in the Bible ethical teachings on sexuality and marriage and other things like that that are going to make certain segments of our society uncomfortable. They're not going to like it. They're not going to approve of what the Scripture or Jesus has to say. And they would say, well, no modern person would believe anything like that. Yet all we need to do is look around. And we're going to look around and we'll find a list of mockery and derision and yes, hatred leveled at Christianity. And there must be a reason for it. A very deep-seated reason for it. And there is. It's the word of God. It is the word. Sure enough, Jesus is clear on this. Make them holy by your word. Your word is truth. Mm. Now that's a problem. Even Pontius Pilate said, what is truth? That right there is a problem for a whole host of unbelievers. It is our certainty that there is such a thing called truth, that truth is knowable, and that truth comes by the revelation of God. This truth also lets us know of two more important things. First, is that there is an authority outside of ourselves to whom we are answerable. And secondly, it lets us know that we cannot save ourselves. The outside authority is he whom we refer to as God, Yahweh, our creator, the great I am, the unmoved mover, the uncreated creator. It is he, and yes, he, as God reveals himself in the masculine. He calls himself father, and he exercises fatherness. It is he that is how God reveals himself. It is he to whom we are accountable for the use of our lives. As the scripture says, you are not your own. You are bought at a price. But what was the temptation with which Satan lured Adam and Eve? You shall be as God. And there it is. We desire to sit on the throne of God. We desire to rule in God's place. We desire to rule our own lives. And therefore, when we are turning to God, confessing our faith in him, We are doing nothing less than humbling ourselves before God 
and submitting to a Lord that is not us. Our old Adam wants no Lord but itself, wants no law but to be a law unto himself. And the unbeliever, those lost in their sins, whether they know it or not, are rebelling against the thought, the truth, that they are not God. Because of this, they lash out, they strike out, mostly verbally in derision and mockery, and yet sometimes in violence, and they reject that the word is the truth. In fact, they reject truth oftentimes. But the truth is a very specific divine reality embodied in Jesus Christ. Truth is in a living connection with Jesus Christ, whose word is truth and no falsehood is found there. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. He is God's truth in name and action. Jesus is the revelation of the Father. All salvation is through Jesus. And since this is true, the world wants nothing to do with Jesus as Savior. Indeed, in the world and all the false religions in the world are all religions of law. They all say, you do and you will be saved. Those who reject all religion just say there's no such thing as any of that. The old Adam does not wish to admit to being a violator of God's law and will. To do so would be an admonition that there is a God outside of the self. This is what leads to a hatred of Christian doctrine. It is also the reason that no one can be argued into the kingdom of heaven. One former president of Concordia Seminary, St. Louis, and an author of a three-volume book titled Christian Dogmatics, Francis Pieper has written, when dealing with an unbeliever, we cannot begin with an attempt to convince him of the divine authority of scripture. We must first bring him to a knowledge of his sins and to faith in Christ, the Redeemer from sin. Unfortunately, most people don't want to be confronted with a proclamation of their own sinfulness. And when they are confronted with that, they often respond with anger or hatred or in many other unsavory ways. So Jesus prays for us. He prays for us that we might be kept safe in this world because we're going to have to meet people and we're not going to meet them in mockery. We're not going to meet them in derision or with a condescending attitude, but we're going to meet them with the truth that the unbeliever absolutely hates. So Jesus asks that the Father would guard and shield us from anger and hatred of satanically inspired unbelief. God guards and protects us from our enemies, the world and the devil. He does not let them seduce us or lead us into other great shame and vice. Instead, it is our prayer that while we are in this world, we would continue to confess the name of Jesus Christ. That is, that we would look upon Jesus as the word of God made flesh, the author and perfecter of our faith. That Jesus is the divinely crowned intercessor for each and every one of us. For it is Jesus who stands between we and the Father. It is Jesus who shows the Father his crucifixion wounds and pleads our case. I have, he says, borne their sins upon the cross. I have shed my blood for their sins. And in my name and for my sake, Father, forgive them. Protect them, Father as they go about continuing the mission you sent me to do. Jesus prays for us as we go into the world to proclaim salvation for our God, the redemption that has already been earned by Jesus of Nazareth. As we go then, we like so many before us, we are the sent ones 
That is, we are witnesses to the truth. We confess Jesus Christ as truth. We go to build up the church so that the number of those being saved would continue to increase. Will there be opposition to that simple message? Yes, there will be. There will be opposition to it. Will we meet that opposition with the word of faith, the word of truth, and the person and work of Jesus Christ? Yes. That's the very way we will meet the opposition. And by God's grace, we will do our part and we will continue to proclaim Christ until he returns in glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may that peace which passes all understanding be in your hearts and minds through the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now rise for our prayers. Let us pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly King, You have gathered us again before your presence. Grant that we may dwell in your house all the days of our lives and gaze upon your beauty manifested here in your word and truth. Graciously receive us as we inquire in your temple. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Almighty Father, through your Son, you gave your word to your children on earth. Guard and strengthen those who are hated by the world because they are not of the world, that not one of them would be lost. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of all nations, since it is your will that we pray for in all authority, we believe with confidence that you hear our prayers for our president or our governor for our Congress, for our legislature, and for all our judges. Teach them the testimony of the truth, that they may be wise and effective in their offices. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Eternal Father, you have testified that eternal life is given in your Son, and that whoever has him has life. You promise also that you will hear whatever we ask according to your will. Comfort and help the sick and the distressed, especially Carl Awe, who has had a recurrence of cancer and a compounding of other health issues. Indeed, we pray for each and every one of those whom we know who are battling with cancer and are asking for their treatments to provide remission from their maladies. We also ask that you would address the hurts and the concerns of those others who are sick with various infirmities and weaknesses. Be their rock, their shield, their fortress, as we ask you that you would heal them and give life to all who hold your son in faithful hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, your son, in his incarnation, took on our human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. He submitted to his mother, honoring and obeying her, and so fulfilling the commandment where we have not. On this Mother's Day, graciously accept our thanksgiving for our mothers, whom you have given to us. Teach us to honor them aright, loving, obeying, and giving thanks for them as is fitting in your sight. Strengthen all women with child and give them safe delivery. Comfort all women who long to have children but cannot, that they may find their consolation in you and your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Holy Father, accept the prayers we offer through your Son, our Savior, and keep us forever in your name and word, that we may be one just as you are one. Sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. 
These things we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reception of our gifts and offerings. You have been sharing in the Sunday morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois, where you have just heard Reverend Mark Thompson deliver the message for this morning. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning on the radio at 8 o'clock over WLLM 1370 AM or WLLM 105.3 FM or at www.zlclinc.org where you will find links to the internet stream and to Facebook Live. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please call us at 732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois, 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. For more information concerning our school, please contact our principal, Dr. Stephen Perry, at 732-3977. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Please rise for the singing of the offertory. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. The closing hymn is hymn number 492, On Christ's Ascension I Now Build, hymn number 492 in the Lutheran Service Book.
please be seated. Okay, the announcements that uh, I have uh, this morning, just a reminder that there's no youth group today, and also that the midweek morning Bible study that was on Thursday is being moved to Wednesday at 10 a.m., correct? Okay, so Wednesday at 10 a.m. is the midweek Bible study with uh, Rod, Rod Meyer. I see Dave over here. Um, Wish all the moms happy Mother's Day. You got a beautiful day going on, so you're you're uh, definitely worthy of a beautiful day. So thank you for all the moms in our lives. I wanted to uh, convey what the stewardship committee has going on. They've got a special coffee hour next door, so partake of that. They've got a lot of goodies, treats, treats, uh, all kinds of good stuff, pastries. So help yourself with that. And, and also, I think all the ladies get a corsage today, so make sure you get that on the way out, and all the moms get a special devotion to them. Well, I, I noticed here, Dave, you, they had written down that beverages will be served, and I was thinking mimosas or champagne. Just coffee today, huh? Not, not on the list. Apparently not. Apparently it's, it's coffee and juice, just, just like uh, normal. Dr. Perry, um, an announcement to make this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, we have reached the last week of school, and we have quite a few activities going on this week. Uh, Wednesday is our last full day, and Thursday we have graduation. That's listed on the back of your bulletin. But Saturday, which is past school, we have five students that are going to the uh, Lutheran track meet at Victoria University in Chicago. It's the state track meet, and I am told this is the largest group we've set for a while. And those students are Addie Campbell, Ellie Rage, Sophia Cook, Kennedy Boucher, and Farrah Holt. So we wish all five of them luck and blessings as they go and represent our school at Concordia on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. And eighth grade graduation, Dr. Perry, Thursday at 7 p.m., correct? So anybody would like to come to the eighth grade graduation service Thursday at 7 p.m. here at the church. And may the Lord bless all of you. May he bless your comings in and your goings out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.